What's up guys, Jeff from Sorta of Healthy here. Today we're back to talking about program design and we're specifically focusing on cardio. How should you handle cardio with your personal training clients? I get this question and many more like it on a very regular basis. And I just happen to think that cardio is one of those things that most trainers don't do a very good job with. Simply put, many trainers make a few key mistakes when it comes to prescribing cardio to their clients. We'll be identifying those mistakes and then talking about what you as a trainer should have your clients do instead. Throughout today's video, I'll be referencing a few forms such as my cardio log and workout chart. These forms are free for all of you to download and use as you see fit. And they can be accessed at this link located in the video description. All I ask for in return for the forms and all this free information today is you liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. This helps the channel to grow and allows me to keep creating free content for all fitness professionals. Thank you so much for that support, everyone. I really appreciate it. So today's video will be split up into a few different sections. We'll be covering cardio within personal training sessions themselves. We'll be covering cardio before and after training sessions, and we'll also be covering cardio prescription for clients on their off days. Before you program cardio for anyone, you should have them fill out the PARQ, the health history questionnaire, and the informed consent. These are just basic health history forms, and they give you useful information on what's going on with your client. Filling them out with your client also does help to cover your ass, which is certainly a huge positive as well. Once you've done the necessary health history, aka the forms we just talked about, you should assess your client. My assessment is here on YouTube, and its purpose is to show where your client is strong and weak. And its other purpose is to get a baseline to measure progress from in the future. Your client's health history, assessment, and of course their personal goals, which you should have uncovered right in the beginning. Well, all of those things should be the pieces of information that allow you to create a cardio program for your client. So in today's video, the client that we'll be prescribing cardio for will be a pretty average client. Their age doesn't really matter. Maybe we'll just say they're between the ages of 20 and 60. Let's also not even give them a gender because that doesn't really matter. Let's say they have no major limitations or injuries, but we'll also say they're new to working out and we'll say they're fairly deconditioned. We'll primarily be discussing cardio programming for a weight loss focused client because they're the ones who will benefit most from additional cardio. Anyways, 90 something percent of your clients will sound similar to what I just described to you if you work in a typical fitness setting. For the other 10 or so percent of clients who have more extreme goals like running a marathon for instance, this advice won't be as effective. Those clients do need more specific cardio recommendations. Today we're focusing on the 90 percent or the average personal training clients who have general health related goals or want to lose weight. Let's kick things off by talking about cardio during personal training sessions. One mistake I see many trainers make is that they include lengthy amounts of machine focused cardio within their sessions. This will very often be viewed as low value by clients. What I'm talking about here would be something like for the first 10 minutes of your session, you have your client walk on the treadmill to warm up. In this case, your client is paying you a dollar a minute, possibly more to walk on a treadmill. Yeah, it's a bad idea. If your client wants to do that before their paid session starts, great. You shouldn't be billing them for that time though. You should be doing dynamic warm-ups with your client that help them to move and perform better in the upcoming workout. These warm-ups should be customized to the specific workout and to that client. Cardio machines could play a small role in that, but they shouldn't be relied upon too much. Again, using them too much during your build time will decrease your value as a trainer and will lead to lower client retention in most cases. You could say that there are two ways in which cardio should be included within your training sessions though. The first way is just by moving through the workout at a good pace. How fast this pace is will entirely depend on how capable your client is. But if you move through your training sessions with your clients as fast as you safely can, while maintaining good form, significant cardiovascular improvements will be made just from that alone. To kick this up another notch, I also make sure to include some specific movements in the vast majority of my workouts. This would be the second way in which cardio would be included within your sessions. Compound lower body movements such as squats, split squats, lunges, deadlifts, step ups, and many more will all be beneficial for eliciting significant significant cardiovascular adaptations in average clients. I also put movements like battle rope waves and slider mountain climbers into my workouts around the more traditional strength training movements to help with this as well. Last but certainly not least in this regard, fairly often I'll include some maximal sprinting activities on things like the rowing machine or airdyne bike in my sessions. Some maximal in this case means these clients are working close to their maximum capacity but not quite there. Say an 8 to 9 out of 10 on the intensity scale. An example of this that I have clients do often Often is 10 seconds slow on the rowing machine, which is enough time for them to get into their groove, followed by 40 seconds of fast rowing. I would have my clients do two or three sets of that, just like any other move. And again, this would be included in the session itself. Another strategy that I like to employ with many clients to increase the pace at which we move through their workouts is by doing supersets or tri sets. I feel like you guys probably know what both of those two things are. 
so there's no reason for me to break them down in extreme detail here. Utilizing supersets and trisets can be beneficial within training sessions with average clients though. For those who are interested, I break all this stuff down in greater detail in this video right here. Next up, we'll talk about cardio before or after training sessions. Before we get into that, let's tackle something first. Is it better to do your cardio before weight training or after weight training? Well, there is some research showing that cardio after weight training is probably very, very slightly more effective for those seeking fat loss. I personally advise most of my clients to do their cardio after weight training because they'll be more fresh or they'll have more energy for the resistance training. And then sometimes I'll briefly mention this tiny little tidbit as well. Of course, I always make sure to mention that the difference between doing cardio before versus after their resistance training is minimal. If they prefer to do their cardio before lifting, that's no problem. At the end of the day, I just want them to do it. If your session is less than 60 minutes long, you should really encourage your client to do cardio afterwards. If you're doing full one hour sessions, you should still encourage some after training cardio, but you will likely want to keep the duration shorter and go a little bit easier on your clients. So what kind of cardio should our clients be doing before or after their sessions? Well, there are two answers to this question. There's the short one and the long one. The short one is that they should do the cardio they're willing to do consistently and the one that they dislike the least. Most of your average everyday clients won't like doing cardio. If they did, then there's a good chance that they wouldn't be hiring you in the first place. So them liking any form of cardio is most likely likely not an option even on the table. That being said, for most people, there will still be at least a few forms of cardio that they won't mind that much. The key thing with cardio and almost anything to do with fitness is consistency. You need to figure out what kind of cardio your client dislikes the least because that's where they're likely to be the most consistent. This brings us to our longer and a bit more complicated answer to this question. This question again being, what cardio should our clients do before or after a session? When we're doing cardio before or after a session, it's best to start things off easy with a new client and then you'll want to slowly build up from there. I'll start most clients off with about 15 to 20 minutes of cardio again before or after their session. You may even have to reduce that time substantially for very deconditioned clients. As far as what machine you use goes, well it doesn't really matter too much. That being said, I prefer my more physically capable clients with less limitations to do mostly weight-bearing cardio since the caloric burn is usually a bit higher given similar intensity. And weight-bearing cardio being things like the treadmill or elliptical. I'll typically only recommend something like the recumbent bike for people with orthopedic issues. Exceptions, of course, do exist here though. As far as what we specifically do on any cardio machine, well, like we said before, we start off easy and then build up from there. Let's get into that a bit more. We're now taking a quick look at the cardio log that I use with my clients. Each of my clients has their own sheet. On the treadmill, I start off many of my clients with uphill walking. Oftentimes, I will start them with the 3-3 or a speed of 3 miles per hour and an incline of 3. Some clients will find this pathetically easy and others not so much. It's usually better for cardio to start somewhere about here and then you slowly build up from this point. Sometimes on the treadmill, I'll have a client start at a 3-3, and then every two minutes, I'll have them raise the incline by one. Again, for many, this can actually be pretty challenging. To further that challenge, let's look at some progression for an average client. Not progressing a client's cardio is a mistake that many trainers make. Over time, I can increase the difficulty of this type of routine. This day, I increase the speed a little bit, and a week later, I increase the initial incline. Challenge your client and keep this as interesting as you can. If my client has a strong desire to run, over time I'll introduce run and walk combinations. I wouldn't introduce this right away with most deconditioned clients. You'll have to use your best judgment on when to introduce something like this. A beginner run-walk combination could be walking for 2 minutes followed by jogging for 30 seconds and alternating for 10 to 12 minutes. For beginners, keep the walking portion at least twice as long as the running portion and slowly over the course of time increase the jogging slash running time and reduce the walking time. If a client has no interest in running, then I may never recommend something like this. You can burn quite a few calories by doing uphill walking and gradually increasing the intensity there. I take a similar approach to handling cardio on something like an elliptical or a bike. You start things off easy and you slowly increase the challenge level over time. Sometimes I use preset programs with things like ellipticals and increase the challenge level over time there as well. Other times I'll have clients do manual intervals. An example might be doing level three on the elliptical for two minutes working at a low intensity and then doing one minute at level nine working 
working at a high intensity. And then of course doing a few rounds of both of those two things. Something like this would probably fall under the HIT umbrella. I don't actually have too many clients do HIT. It's not shown to be drastically more effective for weight loss, although it is more time efficient. I just don't find it practical with too many average deconditioned clients. They're usually not looking for that level of intensity and to be honest, it's not required. That being said, if a client wants to try some high intensity interval training, I don't think that's a bad thing. Just try to help them accomplish that safely. So next up, we'll talk about cardio prescription for clients on off days. Whether we're talking about cardio on session days or off days, it's important to let your client know why they're being prescribed that cardio in the first place. We usually say something like, your goal is to be healthier and lose some weight. Cardio is one of the key tools that we have to keep you in that caloric deficit without dropping your calories too low. Anyways, if we're talking about average personal training clients, the best recommendations that you can give your clients on off days are very simple things. I used to try and make my clients somewhat elaborate cardio and training plans for their off days, but ultimately what I realized was that actually led to worse results. You have to remember the mindset of the average personal training client. Typically, these are not people who enjoy working out. And this fact is literally what keeps you as a trainer employed. Simply put, if you give them challenging cardio to do on their off days, the likelihood of them doing it goes way down. They're most likely going to be working out with you two to three days a week, so ideally they should be getting cardio on those days. On the off days, I advise my clients with average training goals to get as close to 10,000 steps daily as they can. To help with this, I suggest that they do at least 45 minutes of walking on their off days, or they should do at least 45 minutes of walking three times a week, whatever makes the most sense for them. That being said, if you feel that your client would be more consistent with a different form of cardio on their off days, then recommend that instead. This goes back to what we said earlier in this video. Consistency is what you need for success in anything health or fitness related. If you get a client who wants to do something like a 5K, well, there isn't really any reason to reinvent the wheel. Recommend an app like Couch to 5K and have them work on that on their off days. Hold them accountable and see how they're doing with something like that when you see them. But again, keep things as simple as you can. And that, my friends, is how you handle cardio with average personal training clients who are focused on weight loss or just overall health and wellness. Anyways, what do all of you do when it comes to cardiovascular training with your clients? Do any of you have any questions about anything that we covered today? If you do, then make sure to let me know down below in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel because it does help the channel to grow, which does allow me to create more free content for all of you. Thanks for watching everyone. Until next time, stay sort of healthy.